Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to trace a deadlock using SQL Server Profiler. So I'm going to create a deadlock and have it up appear in a SQL Server Profiler. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, turn on the trace flag and I use a 1222 which is the deadlock graph. And you could check the status by using trace status and you'll notice uh, it's uh, global. Incidentally I, I could actually shut it off and you could see how the flags are off now for uh, the global. So I, I want to turn it on for global so I use the negative one and you'll see now it's turned on for global. Um, second thing I want to do is I, I want to check what database ID uh, is the database I'm interested in. So databases I'm going to select from databases and look for my database which is a uh, sandbox and it's database ID 7. So I'm going to go into SQL Server, uh, uh, SQL Server Management Studio Tools Profiler and when I bring up the profiler I could connect so I'm going to do new trace here and I'm going to do very specific um, events so I'm going to uncheck all of these and I'm going to say show all events and under locks there's the deadlock graph. Now the deadlock graph is all I'm interested in because the deadlock and the deadlock chain just shows kind of like the hash and the um, processes which really is uh, sort of meaningless to me. So all I want to do is choose the graph. Now the other thing I do want to do is um, let me do want to do column filters so I'm gonna click on column filters and I'm going to put in my database ID. Now normally I'll put in the name but sometimes the name doesn't actually um, filter really well. Uh, I've, I've seen where this actually has issues filtering on name so I'm going to filter on database ID and remember what I did here was um, I queried uh, sys.databases and uh, looked for my particular database ID so that's what I'm going to do here and now I'm just going to hit run. So the tracing is started and I'm going to create a I'm actually going to create a um, deadlock here. So while that's happening on that screen, let, let me let me split the screen here a little bit. So while it's happening on that screen, I am going to create a deadlock. So I'll have all of this code in the description area so you could actually uh, play around with it yourself. Um, so the deadlock is going to occur soon, um, any moment now, and you'll see the deadlock happened. And as the deadlock happened, you'll see here the deadlock graph shows up. And an another handy thing is um, that what what's really useful is even though you can hover over the bubbles and, and you could actually see the um, statements. What is more useful is actually analyzing the text because lots of times there's certain things in the text especially if you have store procedures uh, calling other store procedures or uh, statements within store procedures sometimes there's a stack frame in there just like a stack trace in other binary uh, languages or other programming languages. So what I'm doing here is I'm hitting Control C on that on this row here, and um, I'm just going to open up a new window and paste the text, which is the deadlock graph represented in a uh, kind of text. So you you'll see uh, sometimes there's a execution frame here where there's other statements that you could see what's going on. So uh, that's that's very important to know that the uh, I'll go through this deadlock graph, the text in another video. Um, but it's important to note that there's things that are more useful other than this uh, pictorial uh, deadlock graph in the text. So all right, I hope that helps you in uh, tracing your deadlocks. Uh, thank you for watching.